Good afternoon everyone, this is Chaitali Bagh, Chief of Bureau with Aviation and Defense Universe right at Fanbra Air Show 2022. It's afternoon and my afternoon interviews begin at Bell. We are with Todd Warden, Senior Manager Advanced Programs, AVLS Sales and Strategy with Bell Doctors and today he is giving us his exclusive time telling us about the equipment. Thank you so much Todd. Thanks a lot for giving us your time. So. You are here at Fanbraya Show. After four years, it's happening. What have you got for the air show for the public for the defense UK defense here in Fanbra? Yeah, so thank you uh, for this interview. Uh, at this Fanbra Air Show, we have the B two forty seven Vigilant. It is a large unmanned aircraft, uh, five, so uh, the largest of the unmanned aircraft. It is a single engine unmanned system designed to fit aboard uh, Navy naval surface fleets. The reason why we bought, brought this here to Farnborough is because we are in the progress of taking lessons learned from our other programs, tilt water programs, for instance, the V280 Valor, taking the lessons learned in our digital thread and the validated performance models and applying them to a next generation large maritime unmanned system. We're bringing this not only to the UK, but also to Europe and to the Asia Pacific region to let other countries understand where we are with this design, to understand the lessons learned that we've taken from our B-22, over 600,000 flight hours, and apply them to a next generation unmanned system. So Todd, um, unmanned systems, next generation products are so many. They are in fashion now. Everybody is making them. What's so special about yours? So what's special about this is, is the proven lineage that this aircraft comes from. The, with the B-20, B-22 having over 600,000 operational hours, with the work that we've done on our JMRTD program for the Army, for the, with the B-280, we, we have a lot of proofs and demonstrated capability that go into this platform. This platform uh, features some different design considerations to make it more efficient, such as a single engine within the fuselage, uh, so we do not have engines uh, in the nacelles of the aircraft. Uh, also, we wanted to take a look at taking those lessons learned and all that engineering design talent that we had and seeing what we could do for building an aircraft that could take off vertically, fly to a distance 200, 300 nautical miles from a ship, and then stay on station for as long as you can. But not just stay on station for as long as you can, but also carry meaningful amounts of payload, supplying electrical power for different systems, as you can see on the side of the aircraft here. We have a multi-mission pod, so this really provides organic capability for countries to integrate their own systems in with the, with the, with the aircraft. And the way they're allowed to do this is through using an open architecture system. So we're using a, a digital backbone, backbone open architecture system that is going to enable customers, whether it's the U.S. military or foreign countries, to integrate their own capabilities into the aircraft. So you have kept the provision for any number of defense sectors, defense uh, uh, countries to uh, do manipulations or do according to them their needs. Yeah, so the, the, by definition, the open architecture system will allow countries to integrate their specific needs onto the aircraft. So that integration is done by you or that specific country? Because it's an open architecture system, that integration can be done by the by the specific countries that purchase the aircraft. Okay. So, is it already present in the European market? Have you already got a European market for the specific... Uh... Currently, this aircraft's in what we call the conceptual design phase, so it's pretty competitive. There have been a number of requests for information from the U.S. government on this type of aircraft. Uh, we, know, we have are aware of several other countries that are looking at large unmanned maritime systems, mm -hmm. um, but none of them have gone to the competitive stage yet. So Bell has been investing uh, in design of this aircraft. We've built a number of risk reduction uh, manufacturing test articles for the aircraft just to show that we're able to do the things that were said that we can do. For instance, we built a half span wing box of the aircraft so we could prove the manufacturing process that we were doing. We've, we've uh, demonstrated the, uh, sorry, good point here, we've demonstrated uh, the air inlet, right, for the engine, so we could demonstrate that the uh, engine is getting the necessary airflow that it needs to have. Uh, we built some fuel boxes, uh, fuel, ba uh, fuel boxes. We built some other manufacturing risk reduction test articles so that we just 
further lower the risk in developing this type of plant. Now, India is a very huge defense market. So, are you going to market the aircraft for the Indian defense as well? We're gonna, we're gonna allow, we're gonna allow, wait, rewind that. We're going okay, to, I will, I let mar we're going to market the aircraft uh, throughout globally. Um, throughout the uh, throughout the world, so whether it's in Europe or Asia Pacific, uh, India, as long as it's not restricted um, by the U.S. government, we will have to act within the bounds of what the U.S. government laws allow. Right. Coming back to Fan Briar show. Three days, three is the third day. We still have few hours to go to finish the third day. How has been the footfall, the response from the industry, your counterparts? as well as the defense market. How has been the response till now? Uh, the response here at Farbro has been very positive. Uh, we've seen uh, a number of folks uh, come through uh, the different uh, booths and exhibits that we've had there. Uh, we're able to share information uh, on where we've progressed to and, and the investments we've made in the 247 as well as our other uh, aircraft that we have on display here. It's been very positive. Great. Thank you so much, Todd. It was a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, we hope next two days are as fruitful as past three days were. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thank you.